I'm Janet Gunn. Welcome to Fearless Females here at Evermedia Studios in West Hollywood. So there's a lot to learn if you're looking to hire an influencer in today's world. And today my guest is Susanna Yee, the founder of Digital Everything Consulting, a digital marketing consulting firm that serves a global clientele. Susanna is a social media marketing pioneer and has 20 plus years of digital social media marketing experience. Digital Everything Consulting is based here in Los Angeles and available online. So if you're ready to market your brand and you can learn everything you need to know before hiring an influencer. I worked with Susanna for almost Almost a year as an influencer so I can speak from experience. Working with Susanna cuts out any misunderstandings. Well, I'm excited for our interview today because I think it's important to help brands understand the importance of when they hire an influencer that they can actually create this winning strategy together for an overall successful campaign. I agree. It really is important what the relationship is between the influencers and the brand and how they work together. And I think that's something that people really have to understand. I mean, after all, everything that's happening is on the platforms and it's social, it's social media. And as they say, social media is sort of like a cocktail party. You know, you really have to have a relationship. Yeah, that's, that, I like that when you put that a cocktail party. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take it back to uh, 2011 when you were named the digital pioneer what was it? The pioneer the, social media pioneer. Yes. That's what a social media pioneer. Uh, Ehow social media pioneer, and uh, they were talking about women who were working in the digital space who were really doing new things. And um, at that time, I was working on influencer marketing campaigns, but they weren't called influencer marketing campaigns. They were called blog marketing campaigns, and I was really working with bloggers and. Um, people who had a blog and a point of view and brands started working with them and collaborating with them and partnering with them. And in those days, if you had a blog and you had a point of view, that's how um, you got the word out for brands. So that's kind of what happened. And it was I was sort of a first mover in that area along with a few others. And um, that's what happened. Because you were photographed with some of the big ones, the big influencers that we know today. Yes, right? yes, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, some of them are doing really well today and yes. so you know i think it just as long as you keep going you get better and better at it you're learning new things constantly and um who knows where it can take you yeah so okay so what was the light bulb moment you had when you said you know what i need to create this influencer roadmap pro uh, program so the influencer marketing roadmap is a sort of a methodology it's like a cookbook if you will on how to go from A to Z and create a campaign for influencer marketing. So if you um, are a brand and you don't know how to work with an influencer, it's great to take this roadmap and get started. And it really takes you from how to find the right influencers for your uh, brand, how to target them, how to reach out to them, what to say to them, um, how to negotiate with them, what the fees are, uh, all the way to how do you get organized within your organization to how do you work with, if you have an agency on the outside, how do you communicate with them from the brand side and also internally to keep you totally organized? Because what happens is if you're working with 10 to 20 different influencers, you're going to be in different areas of this whole campaign. You know, somebody might still be shooting their photos, somebody might still be writing their blog posts, somebody may still be creating their content. And you really have to keep organized because internally they, they also have to get everything approved. So, I mean, in, in your opinion, it's because what I found working with you, my personal experience, is that when you don't have a middleman, which is really what you were so great at doing, is you kept the authenticity of the influencer because that's what the brands, that's why they they wanted to hire you in the first place. So to get, in order to keep their message, the brand's message, in line with the authenticity of the influencer's voice, and when you don't have someone that understands both sides, I found it, um, it was, it took double the time than before I had worked with you yeah. on the campaign that I, we did together. I mean, I, I, I felt like um, after doing it all this time that the, peop that the brands weren't communicating effectively with the influencers when they were working together and, you know, they were having their own conversations internally and then they would have their conversations with their agencies and then the messaging would never get out to the influencer. So the influencer would say, 
what are we doing here? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what do you want me to do? And they would just say, oh, boy, we just need you to do this. Right. And then ends up sometimes people weren't happy with the results. And it's because nobody was ever on the same page. So I, I really think communication is so key. And that's the missing element. And that's what I always stress when I work with brands is that everybody needs to be on the same page. They're on your team, too. They're they're working with you. So you you have to treat them that way. Yeah. So I'm going to read this quote. <laughs> this was pretty good. So on average, campaigns focused on branding or engagements saw an eight times ROI. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So that's what is amazing about it. And I think to explain that better, you would have to see, uh, you know, for certain campaigns. So, for example, like if you're working with an influencer, an influencer is a like a one stop shop, if you will. Right. This person can write a blog post for you. They can shoot a video. They shoot um, they shoot a photograph for you. They write content for you. And then they also amplify it to a ready made audience. I mean, think about it. You're basically already saving money because you're paying this one person to do all these things. If you had to create a Google ad or a banner ad or anything like that, you end up having to um, hire a copywriter. You have to hire a model. You have to hire a photographer. You have to hire a videographer. You have mm -hmm. to hire an ad person. I mean, the list goes on and on before you can even put this thing together, whereas this person has put it together. So the eight times ROI comes from um, the lift, the branding, the engagement, um, the long-term SEO effects. Um, the you know, There was a study that was done by um, a firm that did something for Silk, uh, the silk milk, soy milk oh, company. Right. Yeah. And um, they had 200 something health and wellness uh, people in influencers create uh, campaigns for them, cookbook uh, type recipes for them. And from there, they saw they didn't even amplify any of it. They didn't do anything with it. They just let them write about it. From there, they did a test and they saw from tracking that 10 per, people had a 10% more like likelihood of buying the product in grocery stores as a result of seeing this out there, seeing the the uh, the content out there. So that in and of itself. And then six months later, they were seeing still a lift from that, from the SEO and from just Pinterest, from people pinning things and, and uh, buying through that or, you know, engaging with their their uh, content. So that's the kind of ROI that you keep seeing with influencer type content. And the other thing that you do, too, is that you not only help with, you know, uh, finding the, the great the voice and the nice relationship between the two, but you're also so savvy. You know everything on the back end. Like you really understand that. And working with, I know when I worked with you, that you also helped me understand, well, this is what's going on, you know, and, and if you look at Google ads and if you look at Facebook and uh, so do you do that? Do you show that with to the brands too? You actually educate them on, do you have to tell them to be patient? Say, just be patient. Yes. Well, a lot of times brands think, OK, can we just get 20 influencers and this is what we want them to do and then it's going to work, you know, and it's like, no, it's really a long term investment and it's a long term part of the whole marketing, you know, positioning. So if you will, you know, I mean, you have a PR firm, you have an ad agency, you have, um, you know, Facebook ads, you have Google ads, you have content writers, you have a blog writer. And then you also, you know, the influencer marketing piece is another piece of that. And that's what they forget. They think that, you know, we have these people and that's it. And they're going to go off and do that. They have to incorporate it into their whole cohesive marketing ecos ecosystem. And mm -hmm. I think that's what people forget. Also, it should be a long term relationship. It shouldn't be a one off because think about it this way. If someone is trying like a teeth whitener, right? And they, you know, the influencer says, I'm going to try this in month one. What happens in month two? What happens in month three? I mean, these people are following them because they're loyal to them and they believe in what they're talking about. And so you have to sort of see the see the time, you know, the trajectory of the whole, you know, the teeth whitening campaign, like how, you know, at least three months to see it through. You can't say, well, OK, so a month one, it worked and that's it. Yeah, I, that, it's not believable. Right. And also, yeah, you have to be credible. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I know in the past before I'd worked with you, uh, you know, I told the brands and they say, well, let, we just want to do this for one time. And I said, well, I don't know. I said, I think it would be more uh, successful for you yeah. uh, if we did two to three mm -hmm. at least. I mm -hmm. said, because, you know, when you sit down to read a magazine, you don't see one ad and then you never see it again. Mm -hmm. You see it in the next issue and in the next issue. Mm -hmm. And that, 
you know, it just, it's like, okay, I, I understand. It's like I'm seeing this person and, and subliminal, but that's the message. But when you have an authentic influencer who's actually using the product, showing you step one, step two, step three, from A to Z, then I th like you said, that's when you get the success. That's when you start to see a return. And I, I think that's what they're missing a lot. A lot of them are missing it right now. Everybody's jumping on the influencer marketing bandwagon and they want to get involved but they don't understand that it's a long-term commitment and it should be for the brand. Um, just like anything else, if you do PR, it's not you know a one month gig. You right. know, it's a, you're doing Google ads, it's not a one month gig. You're doing Facebook ads, it's not a one month gig. So why should an influencer marketing campaign be a one month gig? That's what I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Or do you think brands are understanding that more? I think bit? it's coming it's happening. Yeah. Um, I think it's starting to grow and it's very new still to them. Um, the companies who have embraced it have done very well because they understand that everything takes time. Um, just like this, these studies that are coming out, like with the Silk campaign, where a year later, uh, six months later, they're still seeing um, residual effects and, uh, you know, a lot of great ROI from their campaign. So as, as more and more of these publications come out and as more and more people understand what's happening and get educated, I think that's when everything will work per, you know, better, better. And I think that's when the brands that want to do this will do it and the ones that don't won't do it, you know, but there, at least the education process is there so that the ones who adopt it will fully adopt it. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about or what's your idea on hiring a celebrity now as opposed to an influencer? Do you think that celebrities do sell product or I guess it depends on the product, right? I mean, I think it depends if it depends on the type of company and brand you have. If you have enough, if you have enough money in your budget, go for it. Hire mm -hmm. a celebrity, right? Um, you're a big, huge company. But if you're a smaller brand and you have a limited budget, I suggest you hire smaller micro influencers. They're where it's at right now. Nano influencers and micro influencers are the ones that are most influential. We see the highest engagement in the industry from the people with smaller followings because they're, they're, they have a specific point of view, they have a niche, and then the people that are following them are really um, interested in what they have to say and their point of view. They're not just following them because they're a celebrity. So these people are so loyal to this person and this person has given them so much value and so much information that if you work with several micro-influencers, you're gonna get more value out of that most likely in terms of engagement, brand recognition, and ROI in terms of click-throughs, possibly sales, um, than working with a celebrity. Would it give us the numbers for what's a micro-influencer and then what's the... Nano. Nano. So a nano is somebody who's probably has like 5,000 followers and less. Uh, that's somebody who's really a hobbyist and they once in a while, you know, go on their platforms and talk about something that they really, really like. Uh, most of their followers are their friends and their family and maybe friends of friends, yeah. but they're very influential, you know, because those people that are following them are really listening to what they have to say. They're probably the ones people walk up to, you know, in terms of friends and family and say, you know, where did you get that? Or how's it going for you? So um, those people are very influential and there is a growth in that area right now. Micro influencers are people who were those people have grown into people with a bigger following. You know, it might not just be friends and family anymore. It's also friends of friends of friends, and then um, also a few big influencers who might be following the micro influencers because they're friendly, they've worked together before, and they've started seeing them around. Um, and micro influencers are influential probably also in their field of work. Mm -hmm. And those that's how they get known. And um, they are in the range of uh, 10,000 to about 100,000. Mm -hmm. Those are really micro influencers. Well. What I've realized too is that since when I started with you last, I think it was the, in May, that we're, it's, we're in fe March now, I still have the relationship with the brand that you contacted me for. Yes. So that speaks a lot. And they still are working with me because of the relationship that I had with working with the three of us together. 
Yes. I mean, that says a lot for what you do. That's huge. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate that because I think I, I really try to educate the brand to understand what the point of view is of, for the influencer and help them find value for that. And I think that's where it is all about. I mean, at the end of the day, I keep mentioning that it's a human relationship mm -hmm. and brands have to understand this. I know when they say, well, we're going to do a campaign to hire 20 influencers, you know, I get it. It's it's it, there's a large number of people that you're dealing with, but someone internally in the brand must keep that relationship going. Otherwise, um, you're not understanding the point of view of the influencer. You're not understanding where they're coming from or what they're trying to achieve. And every one of these influencers has something to offer that's different. And when you hire them to do a campaign for you, you like them for their point of view and for their voice. And we can't forget that. Yeah. And a lot of times brands do yeah. by giving, you know, direction that might not match the influencer's point of view. Yeah. Well, you know, I looked at it, too. It's as if you're if you see a great movie, the relationship between the director and the actor that is ongoing. Yes. And in order to tell that story, you develop this, you know, strategy, like a, a working strategy to understand each other. And I think that if you can a lot of brands, if they can look at influencers like that and vice versa, influencers look at the brand and have, you know, a lot of respect for what the message is they're trying to get across, yeah. then you can really have a wonderful relationship, like you said, and a winning strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Overall and, success for both sides. And and it's true. Like you, you said, with the actor and the director relationship, it is totally that because, um, if you want the influencer to create the type of content that you want them to create where they're happy and they feel inspired and creative, you have to give them that direction and at the same time allow them the freedom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what brands really need to remember. And so you're, so what, who is this program for? Like if you really had to zero in who, how many people work at your company? So I think this program is really great for a company that has between 10 and 150 people. So if your company is a 10 person company and you have, you know, one or two assistants that are on board, you know, somebody who can take the reins and really manage the process internally, this person should have about 10 to 15 hours a week that they can use on this um, campaign. And I mean this meaning when you start the program from beginning to end, it's about eight weeks each module is about two weeks and uh, you will be doing a campaign at the same time. So it's not like you're taking a class. It's really like a recipe book on or a roadmap on how to create this campaign. So, you know, week one and two, you're going to be figuring out what kind of influencers you want, selecting them, uh, going out to them, shortlisting them. And so that time period when you're learning the course, watching the videos, doing the worksheets and also looking at the templates, which I give, uh, you should be filling them in with your target people who you want to work with. So mm -hmm. so um, the time consuming part, which people don't understand and the brands don't understand, is how long it takes to find the right influencers. The most consuming thing to do in this whole process is finding the right influencers for your campaign and then working with them to create the right type of content and getting approval. So this whole process takes a while and it takes a while for the influencers to create the content too. Right. Creating content is time consuming. Yes, so that's another thing that we don't want to undervalue. And okay. I think that's where the brands can understand. It's a whole education process in this whole roadmap is they can see it going on and they can actually uh, do everything inside their brand and learn about the whole process as well. Yeah, because you really are with the influencer. You're getting um, you're getting a cameraman, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting an editor. You're getting the storyteller. Yeah, you're, you're getting all that, and then the brand is, of course, the uh, um, the vehicle. That exactly brings the two together. Exactly, yeah. and um, I think it's great for this type of. Uh, campaign, even if even if a brand eventually wants to use an agency again, it, I think it's a great process for them to see and take this roadmap and try it out and see how far they want to use this whole uh, roadmap in terms of what they want to do internally. So they can sort of figure out what they want to do internally and what they want to give to an agency. Because a lot of times there's that whole process, like, do we have the agency takeover? Mm. You know, why is it taking so long? 
Um, why is it not getting done? As opposed to if you have somebody internally who's handling some of the contacting and some of the content review and some of the uh, managing of the process, and then you give them maybe part of the work. It, you know, it could be a hybrid process yeah. as the company grows. But for smaller companies, you know, between 10 and 150 people in the company, I really highly suggest trying to do this on your own. You'll save you know, between five and $8,000 a month on average is what you pay an agency. And um, internally, you'll learn exactly what you're looking for. And also, the, you don't have to worry about getting the message across. You'll you'll get the message across because yeah. you're working on it internally. So it, it's what your program offers a huge value for what it is. You figured out how to tell from A to Z, right? Yes, it's almost yes. like working with influencers for dummies, as I would yes. like to call it, yeah. if you want to look at it like the books that they used to. Uh, that they would put out, but you really do provide so much, you know, infrastructure. Yes, and yeah, it's, it's, a lot it's of real value. life. Um, it's real life experience. You know, I've used this for years, and so I've developed these templates, and I've developed these methodologies, and the way I reach out to people for years now. And so I decided, why not just call it down and put it onto something where people can benefit from it, and it can help them, because I've talked to a lot of clients who. Uh, said, you know, we can't hire an agency. What should we do now? Mm -hmm. And so I thought, why not create something for them? Yeah. Did you ever think from 2011 to now that it would look like what? No, no. <laughs> I mean, like now that's the craziest thing. I, I didn't think it would. I, I didn't think it would be this way. But, you know, what's funny is I thought we would be sort of further along, actually, in the industry. It okay. sort of evolved. But um, I thought by now people would have figured out how to work with influencers and understand it. But I think it, there was sort of a period of time where they were doing collaborations and then they didn't do them and then they picked up again. So like yeah. 2015 was that period where they started picking up again. And then um, just 2019 right now, people are really fully trying to embrace it, but now they're trying to really understand it. Well, I think maybe it'll speed up the process with your program, yes, <laughs> right? Yes, that would be great. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish you so much success. I can't tell you how, um, how it's just been fantastic working with you. You know, you really, really shined a light on so many things. I mean, I was, you educated me on both sides. Yeah. And I think that's so important, you know, just that growth alone. So we have all your links, where to find you, but you can tell us your website. Sure. Um, so the website is www.learninfluencermarketing.com. Okay. So super easy. And follow follow you on Instagram, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter. Yep. Uh, yeah. You can follow me in all those places. And uh, Digital Everything Consulting is on Instagram. And Digital Everything is on Facebook. Okay, super. Well, I look forward to our future campaigns together. Yes. Thank I really, you. Yeah, there thank will you be so more. much. There I, will be I more. know. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you for coming in today. Thank I you for having me. I appreciate this.